know so many of you struggle with posting ears. So I wanted to give an updated tutorial on how to properly post the ears. And we're gonna use Miss Evie today. Let's begin with the supplies you're going to need. Everything's in my Amazon storefront, so you can find it all there. Now, the stuff that I use to post is this polyfoam caulk saver. I always have two sizes on hand. I like to start with the smaller one, the 3 eighths in diameter for when they're very young. Once they start growing and get bigger, I move up to the half inch in diameter. The second thing you'll need is a pair of bandage scissors. Again, in my Amazon storefront, these are awesome. They have a blunt tip that you could slide up the back so you won't cut them. You just have to be careful of the edges. You need duct tape. You need a breathable tape, such as the Jonas, or I like to use the Black Hamptons tape. You will also need a clipper to make sure that the ears are clean inside and out and have no hair. And then I also like to put in this Caldecine powder in the base of the ear just so it will absorb any of yeast that or, you know, gunky stuff that sometimes happens, especially when you first start. Okay, so let's begin. So I go from the back of the ear and I make sure because this flap right here is folded back. So you don't want to move over it this way or too much that way. So you go up the middle of the ear and just cut it off. Easiest way to get them off. Now let's do the clippering. I use this wall bravura because it's nice and quiet and it's small. And move it all the way over to the surgical blade, which is like the 30 or 40. And I shave the outside of the ear as well as the inside. Evie is ready to play right now with her litter mate, so she's a bit distracted. But you wanna make sure you get all the hair off. Be very careful around the edges because their cartilage is so thin right now and you could get it caught. But you see, it's nice and quiet, so they really don't fuss. Let's just start by measuring the post to the puppy's ear. So when I put the post down in the I ear, I always make sure that I pull the ear towards back, the, back towards the tail and then wiggle it in like this. Measure a little bit above the tip and cut. And then you just take this and there you have your two posts. Then you're going to take your duct tape. And this is in order to make the post. It's too flimsy just to put it in the in the ear. So this makes it stronger. I usually do two to three layers of the tape and I do it long ways like this. Just roll it. Roll it really tight. Do another layer. I also leave a little bit of the cushion out of the duct tape because that's gonna go down into the ear canal. Now you're ready to start taping. They start right where the duct tape is. Go around first with the sticky side in. And then you immediately go back and wrap it the other way so that the sticky side is out. And I didn't mention that sometimes you need to use a skin glue. What I use is the Torbit. And again, that's in my Amazon storefront. But I really don't like to use that if I don't have to. And normally I really don't have to. If you have a puppy that constantly pops his ears out and you're doing everything else right, then you can use a slight layer of glue, put it on, on the put inside of the ear, let it get tacky, and then put your After I've in. made my posts, this is when I will put the powder in the base of the like ear. That. Just a little bit. You could put a little on top here too. It did forget to mention in the beginning that you need cotton too, cotton balls. Once the posts are made up, I haven't done the second one, but I usually do both. I put a very thin little piece of cotton at the bottom. Don't make this too thick, because if it's too thick, it's not gonna get far enough down and it's gonna pop back out. What I also do with the cotton, I used to always have the issue of, people say they develop pockets. Develop pockets right above this nub in this area. And what happens is then the ear is gonna tilt in, which you don't want. So in order to prevent that, 
I will take a cotton round. Usually I split it in half. You just need something big enough that it's gonna push that out. And I place it here, just like that. And then I will take the post, work it in. See how I'm twisting and pulling back, but stretching the ear up. You want to stretch the ear up, otherwise the ears don't stand really, really straight. And then I begin to tape. Okay, so once you have all that set in place, then you take your two pieces of tape, like this one, start at the bottom. You want the flap here to fold back, not too tight. Do not do it tight. You can cut the circulation off. So see how much room I have? And then I just kind of squeeze it that way. And then I take my second piece of tape, start at the top, again, not too tight, and go down to meet the other piece. So you don't need a ton of tape either. A lot of people like wrap it so much and that could be first of all uncomfortable and second of all it's just the tape taping around is not going to hold the ear in itself. You need all these other steps in order for it to stay down in the canal. Now I usually will cut any excess off up here. I hold where the tip is so I don't cut the tip of the ear off. And then I just take a little piece of tape, like that, and just tape it over this. Then we do the other side. Now it's time to brace the ears. And this is a very important step. A lot of people skip this. Do not skip this. It is needed for them to stand up nice and straight. So you start going towards the back, bring it around to the front, and then twist it to the other ear. Don't do it so tight that the other ear goes over here. You want it to be a little loose. And then you're going to go back again, twist, and put around. And then you lift it up and just tighten the tape in between, pull the hair out. Now you see, they are not straight like this because you want them to be able to work them. I like them to be at like 11 and 1 o'clock. This way, they don't tip in and you're not creating the pockets because remember, we have the cotton in there and we don't have them posted like this so to me this is perfect and I would leave them posted as long as everything stays put for anywhere between three to five days in the beginning um, if they pop out you need to take them down and start over do not leave them with it popped out because again you're gonna cause a pocket so if you follow these steps and you are consistent don't give them breaks in between as long as everything is nice and clean and good there are no scabs there are no nothing you will get them to stand much faster than if you were to say, take them, put them up, take them down, and then leave them for say a few days. Cause then the ears fall and you're just starting all over again to get the cartilage to you know, be trained to stand straight. Hope this helps. If there is anything that I missed, just leave me a comment, ask any questions and have a great day.